OK, I'm just going to show you some different ways in which you can use Photos Blending options. So, for example, in this image, what I'll do is move to the Adjustments Studio, and I'll scroll right down and add a white balance adjustment. So I'll drag balance all the way to the right for almost like a sepia tone. But what I'll do is, on the Layers Studio, make sure we have white balance adjustment selected, and then tap More and see here where it says normal. We can tap this and we have access to a number of blend modes. So for example, I might try multiply, which gives quite a moody look, or we could scroll down and try some others, overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, and so on. I think I'll stick with soft light. And if I just tap anywhere to get rid of the blend mode dialog, we can also control the overall strength of the adjustment by scrubbing opacity here. OK, so another way of blending is by using blend ranges, and they are these two boxes down here. So essentially what they do, if we just tap Source, is they control how the layer is blended in two different tonal ranges. So if I grab the right-hand node here and drag it all the way down, what this is doing is now blending that adjustment out of the highlight and mid-tones. So you see here we have the node on the left here, that controls the blending of the shadow tones, and this node, the highlight tones. Something else we can do, if I change from master here, is we can target individual color channels. So for example, I can move to the green channel, and then drag the shadow tone node down all the way. And so that gradually then blends the adjustment out of the green shadow tones. Of course, we can also add more nodes to this spline graph just by tapping anywhere and dragging to add a node, like so. It's logarithmic by default, so we get a nice gradual curve, but we can also toggle that using this option here, like so. OK, so let's look at another example. So with this image, what I'll do is, on the Adjustment Studio, I'll add a black and white adjustment. Then I'll move across to the Layers Studio. Then on the More dialog here, I'll tap and change the Blend Mode from Normal to Glow. Now, this looks way too strong by default, so we're going to knock the opacity down to about 25% or thereabouts. And this is a great example of what experimentation can yield. So because we're using a black and white adjustment, we have all these selective color mix options down here. I can, for example, scrub the yellow slider. And in combination with the glow blend mode, that controls almost like the blooming of certain tones in the image. And it's not just adjustment layers that we can do this with. So for example, if I tap and select the background pixel layer, move across to the Filters Studio and scroll down, let's find the Shadows and Highlights filter. OK, so what I'll do is bring up the shadow detail quite significantly. And then what I want to do is add this as a live filter layer. So rather than commit the filter using the check icon, I can tap the lightning bolt down here, and yes, convert to live filter, move across to the Layers Studio. And we have selected here the Shadows and Highlights filter. That's fine. So we'll tap the More icon again. And using Blend Ranges, for example, we could blend this effect out of the highlight and gradually the mid-tone detail. And also, if we tap Master, we can move across to the blue channel and maybe blend out of the blue channel information. OK, final example then. So we've got down here in this image the Photo iPad logo. And if I bring out the Layers Studio, we can tap the More icon. And let's look at the difference between Source and Destination down here. So Source means that pixels from the layer that you're currently blending, i.e., in this case, the logo, will gradually become less visible. OK. So we'll just reset that. 
and then destination means that pixels from the underlying layer that you're blending into, so in this case it's the image, will become more visible. Like so. So depending on the kind of compositing you're doing, there is sometimes only a subtle difference, but you should experiment between the two depending on what type of look you're trying to achieve. All right, so there we go. I hope that was just a little helpful look at blend modes and blend ranges, and I've just given you some examples of how you can use them in practice. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.